Dear Marta, hello. Happy July, I think it's the 11th today, Monday. Um, so afternoon here in Los Angeles, so probably the first few minutes of, of Tuesday the 12th in London or Malaga or Paris or wherever you are. I, I gather from Hippie Picasso and whatever else I've seen that you've been traveling a lot. Since you were dabbling or thinking about video, I was kind of inspired to, to send you a video back. And um, I guess you had said that, you know, some, some friend or friends encouraged you to think about trying video and you're kind of feeling how that, you know, compares to, um, to writing blog posts. And for, for whatever reason, whether it's some deep love of language or, or just habit or I don't know, it seems like maybe you and I are both you know, we, we like the word thing, um, which is kind of why I like, you know, a laptop so much better than a tablet. <laughs> why I was so crushed to hear that you had replaced your, your MacBook Air with an iPad. Um, uh, I, I really like, I really like having a, I guess an OS rather than a, a mobile OS. I think, uh, anyway, whatever with that, but, um, so, I, I think your 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 observation that that vlogging or using this media felt maybe for you a little bit that the media seemed maybe overpowering in a way that you felt like you were in vlog space rather than in art space and how do you get there and and I mean it's an interesting question you know I've uh, I, I used to paint, I used to make things, I don't really make things anymore. Um, I still like that work, I still respect that work by myself or by other people, but I'm you know, more interested in newer media and more conceptual things and you know, maybe more performative or more public or more social things. Um, and so as I've moved into this kind of space, you know, somebody asked me the other day, uh, oh, you're an artist, that's so cool, do you have a website? So I gave her a URL and she kind of pulled it up on her phone and she said, oh, well this is just a blog. And you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, what make, what sort of christens something as being an art thing rather than a public thing. And even when we set up Turning Pages, I think some of the uh, initial ideas that you had really helped to make it a little bit, you know, at least, at least in terms of form or style feel a little bit more like like an art installation piece rather than a, a blog blog thing um, but it's an interesting question I like I think I've told you about the artist uh, Tin Nguyen Vietnamese American artist who couch surfed here for a while and uh, I think it was like week 50 of his 52 weeks of couch surfing across America and his project had many facets it's a transmedia project in the sense that um, what he experienced and the book he will make and the, the, the gallery thing that some people are working on with him, they're all gonna be different. They won't really be the same material. Um, but for his project, he photographed his bed sheets wherever he woke up each morning in his year of couch surfing, which um, I don't know if that's too abstract, but I think you know I like, and I think probably you would appreciate that it's, it's, it's not too kind of literal, that it's, that it's taking this circumstance which is so kind of rich with material and stimulation and abstracting it a bit um, and you know I mean if I were doing that if that were my piece maybe I would photograph the bed sheets and then maybe there'd be a blog post and I think that maybe that's what his book will end up being um, so the text in the blog post might be a little bit more literal and a little bit more descriptive of the people and the experiences but the image instead of being you know, us all laughing at location X or smiling, you know, you know, beautifully or something, uh, that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very visual, but a more ephemeral kind of capturing of that. So I think, I think, I haven't actually seen any of the results. I only know about the project and he, you know, stayed for a while and took pictures. But uh, I think what Tin was doing really makes um, intuitive or aesthetically, it feels good. Um, as far as video goes, I, I think, you know, you're right to be, to be nervous, like how do you do something that's special in the space? I mean, it's, 
uh, YouTube is so staggeringly overpopulated. Um, you might know that if, if this may already be out of date, but the last I heard, um, the content uploaded to YouTube is 100 hours of new video is uploaded every one minute. So 100 hours, 100 hours, 100 hours. So I mean, it's, it's just inconceivable um, how much content they have and how much, uh, you know, YouTube is outstripping the entire history of broadcast television in, you know, I think in two weeks, YouTube uploads more content than the history of broadcast or something like that. So it's, it's kind of daunting, but then obviously anything online and, and, you know, arguably anything about the human condition. I mean, maybe it's too ridiculously narcissistic that artists want to even have a global footprint in a planet of 7.2 billion people. You know, maybe we should do smaller local things. I mean, that's kind of, I think, the impulse in a lot of the things we've talked about. So video. Um, you know about the new project that Alyssa and I are curating, Shame Wrapped in Repulsion, which um, was, it's not only about food, but it was motivated out of uh, Burger King's brand new Mac and Cheetos, a mashup of mac and cheese with, with Cheetos little chips, um, which is pretty interesting. It seems like, you know, there are, there are a variety of food mashups these days, like the the turducken that people eat at Thanksgiving now, or I guess to go with your turducken, you have some pie cake in. And maybe it's too simple to say, but I just, I wonder if all these food mashups don't come out of the fact that, you know, platforms like YouTube have, have been so powerful in promoting the video mashup. So it's been obviously in new media, it's, it's been mashup culture for, I mean, arguably forever, but I think a lot in, in kind of the last few years. And so maybe food culture is kind of, you know, coming along now and, and also kind of doing this mashup thing, which seems kind of silly and ridiculous and probably is, but maybe is just following that same impulse. Or again, it's not like people weren't doing food mashups since forever, but these are very, you know, or vert and crazy kind of mashups. Um, anyway, so the, the show that Alyssa and I are curating, Alyssa Arney, pretty awesome artist curator, if you don't know her. Um, uh, Alyssa and I are curating this show inspired by Burger King Mac and Cheetos. So I looked and found, like within a couple days of Burger King releasing that product, um, dozens of video reviews by all these people on YouTube. And they're kind of crazy and they're kind of out there. And it's kind of interesting that um, all these different YouTubers, the video ultimately is about them more than the Mac and Cheetos, although they do like rush over to the Burger King drive-thru and get some and then eat them in the car or take them back to the studio or wherever they go and eat them and give you the critique. And the critique usually winds up being something like, you know, not as disgusting as I expected them to be. But, um, but like there are these two brothers who like, it's an 11 minute piece they do and they basically just sit in the car and cuss at each other for 11 minutes. And, and they also look up, you know, they're kind of like bodybuilder guys and they actually do get on their phone and look up the calorie count for Mac and Cheetos. It just turns out an order of Mac and Cheetos has less calories than a, you know, an order of fries. But um, the thing with, with Alyssa and I curating these pieces is Alyssa and I have each contacted an artist who we think is pretty interesting um, who's going to create a, who's going to, you know, produce a, a Mac and Cheetos video review for us. I talked to Bambi Ford, who's pretty interesting. Um, uh, and Bambi's stuff is pretty crazy. And Alyssa talked to these guys who do these also kind of amazing food pieces. The thing is, the, the real, if you will, vlog YouTube reviews of Mac and Cheetos are already so out there that it's like, where's the room? Like, like here's reality and here's like art parody out here, but, but YouTube has pushed reality out to here. And I, I don't know if there's like for art or parody or critique or, or different points of view, like it, it, it's always seems like it's already in there already. So long winded, sorry, way of saying that your question, you know, how can I use this media that seems interesting and seems compelling, but I don't want to be just a vlogger, not that that's not cool, but that I want to find my own space and, and find a, a maybe abstracted, maybe art space that, um, that your question, I think, is a really good one. Uh, I don't have an answer for sure. And, and I mean, I guess you don't either. But, you know, again, it's, you know, it's not like people don't pick up a paintbrush and ask a lot of questions and destroy canvases that they don't think were successful. And, you know, 
if they're lucky, eventually work their way to a solution that, that works for a while. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at art history, somebody like Pollock eventually found this solution that, you know, changed everything. But he didn't really want to keep painting those for all that long, and he moved into other things, even though, you know, the art world, which wasn't nearly as monstrous as it is today, you know, would have preferred probably him to just keep manufacturing these things and selling them. Um, so he found really an enormous solution that changed a lot, but it still wasn't a solution forever. It was a solution for a while until you, you know, continue to move on. So I think you have a great question. I really encourage you to, you know, to keep going and, and, and see where the media can go. And, and I'd love to kick that idea around with you. Um, yeah. So I've been watching, you know, different people on YouTube these last few days, actually. And kind of my, my latest uh, viewing has been this uh, Stella Ray, who... Um, she's from Bellingham, Washington. She may have just moved actually to LA a few days ago, or if she didn't, she wants to do that pretty soon. Uh, anyway, she's in Bellingham, Washington. She's a 17 year old vegan. Um, and she, I, I think maybe when she started, when she went vegan a couple years ago, she was by herself, I'm not sure, but she's kind of assembled at this late date, like this vegan posse. And it's, it's, um, you know, sometimes you'll watch one of her videos and there's like six people in the room and they're all talking and there's six or more video cameras and, and they're all going out to each person's different individual, um, uh, channel, uh, but what's uh, I, I just find her to be uh, really smart and really charismatic. I mean, you know, she just really I think connects powerfully with the camera, and it's it's really a joy to watch her stuff. Some of sometimes her pieces actually are have quite a few ideas in them. Sometimes you could argue they're kind of about nothing, but really in either case, I think her presence and her connection to camera and audience is really powerful. Um, Again, I know that's probably almost maybe even the opposite of what you're thinking of, but it's just interesting to see how, you know, someone pretty young can really um, has, just do some really great work. Uh, it's, it's also funny, you know, some semesters I have my students, one of the activities we try is, okay, let's go do a vlog, and um, it, they hate it for the most part. A couple of them might like it, but a lot of them really hate it. Now, they're freshmen. I think seniors are already more outgoing and more articulate, but the freshmen tend to not love it. It's also worth saying, you know, Long Beach is really a great school, but, you know, to be honest, it is a working class school. It's not UC Berkeley or UCLA or Stanford or USC. Um, I think at places like that, those students have probably been told every single day of their life you can innovate, you can reinvent, it's, you know, it's your birthright to create and to, uh, you know, to disrupt and, and to, to push your ideas out into the world. And I think, you know, my student, those students have probably heard that every single day of their life. I don't think my students have ever heard that once in their life. So turn a camera on and start talking and, you know, be interesting or just say anything at all is really a challenge. Um, but one semester, I actually had them do the whole semester was vlogs. Like every week, that, that was how they turned their stuff in was to vlog it. Um, and the first week, they're kind of like in their bedroom at midnight. They're whispering and hoping their parents or whoever doesn't hear them. And they're so shy, and I can't even hear them on the video. And a handful of weeks later, um, they've really developed a rapport with the camera, and they've become you know engaged, and they're able to communicate. Again, that sort of maybe literal vlogging kind of space isn't what you're looking for, but I think the idea that playing with the media, getting comfortable with it, and you know finding where you want to go. I mean, you know, you, you know, a video has obviously by sort of definition, it has two elements. Uh, it has picture and sound. It also has you know human or not, voice or not, lighting, editing, many other aspects, but all of those aspects kind of get distilled into picture and sound. Uh, you know, a lot of videos like this one, it's picture of a, you know, it's a talking head. It's a picture of a guy and words are coming out of his mouth. Your videos don't have to be that though, right? You could have the camera over here pointing at something else as you're talking, or the camera could be pointing as you as you feed in a microphone of sounds, you know, down the river or whatever. Or, I don't know, I think, um, I suspect that I and probably you will both keep 
writing words on, on blogs. I, I find that a, a compelling space. Um, but you have inspired me really to think more about video, which I, I, you know, I make videos for my students, but I hadn't really thought past that and maybe I should. So this is probably not a great start because it's like the, just a pure talking head video, but, um, interesting place to think about. So, um, thanks for getting me kind of to think about the space a little bit and, you know, good luck with your own thinking about how you might work with the space. And I'm eager to hear, see what you come up with. Okay. Bye for now. Love you.